Hey guys, today I'm doing a review on the Hayabusa T3D 3D printed boxing gloves. Let's check it out. Hey guys, Carlo here and today I'm doing a review on the Hayabusa T3D 3D printed boxing gloves. I got mine in this cobalt blue colorway. 16 ounces, it is a Velcro closure only model. You can get this anywhere between 10 to 18 ounces. Four different colorways, including the cobalt blue. You can also get this in red, dark gray, as well as a pearl white. It's made of a synthetic leather outside casing that they call Vylar. And it's pretty much the same material they use in their other synthetic gloves. For the padding, it utilizes their new 3D printed cell, or they call it 3D printed lattice, which replaces your traditional foam padding. And we'll discuss that in more detail here in a second. And lastly, the gloves are manufactured in China. Now, from a design standpoint, when you're looking at this glove, the first thing that sticks out to me is going to be the height and the width, and just kind of the overall shape of the glove. It does uh, look very similar to the traditional T3 glove in terms of the dimensions of the glove. Now, the aesthetics are obviously different when you're looking at it from the naked eye. You can just tell that just from the design, it looks kind of different with the different design cues they use on the back as well as on the palm side of the glove. But if you're looking for a sizing reference, this to me is pretty much the same size, 16 for 16, when it comes to your traditional uh, Hayabusa T3 glove. So if you have a pair of three T, uh, T3 and 16, they're gonna be pretty much identical in terms of sizing and fit with the T3D gloves. Um, coming on to the back side, we'll start there. You'll notice it uses that same synthetic Vylar uh, synthetic leather material that they use uh, for the outside casing. This one has a little bit more of a shine to it and I'm sure that is by design where some of the other uh, models are a little bit more of a matte finish but this one has a little bit more of a shinier finish to it. You have that embossed Hayabusa uh, Falcon I want to say that's a Falcon logo in white and also says H.V7.2 uh, right here in black font. Um, and like I showed you guys a couple of weeks ago in the unboxing video, um, you have this window right here. It's kind of, it has a rubberized window that exposes that 3D printed cell. Now, 3D printing has been around for a very long time now and started getting really more popular over the last couple of years um, in terms of people using them for like mouth guards and other types of, you know, polyurethane rubber type products. They use them for casting. There's so many different uses for 3D printing. A lot of people do 3D printing in their own home. You know, they have beginner level 3D printing devices all the way up to, you know, commercial grade stuff. So that's essentially what you're looking at here is that 3D printed cell. Um, and it kind of reminds me of like a honeycomb or hexacomb like Tidal had a couple years ago in terms of that structure. There was a little cube that they included with the gloves when I received them. And it basically the consistency is kind of a medium to firm consistency to it. You can squeeze down on it. Um, but it has kind of like a rubbery uh, type of feel to it and, and bounciness uh, to that. So you can see that it does have that exposed uh, window right there. My biggest issue with this is going to be for sparring. There's a lot going on on the back of the gloves and you can see that there's, there's this opening here and it's rubber, but you could definitely cut someone if you were to kind of graze them with like a hook or a punch that is off target. Um, so that window right there is a big issue and just having different levels of stitching and different textures on the back of the glove compared to a traditional glove where everything is just one flat piece of leather. This you have so many different little pieces uh, of stitching and openings that for sparring uh, that's just something that I'm not uh, very keen to and having that right there. So that's going to be kind of a, an issue for me in terms of sparring is just having all of this on the back of the glove and you know, if it goes against your skin, you can definitely get an abrasion or a cut. Um, going back here again, it says T3D. That's a rubberized patch that's actually recessed and stitched in uh, to the back. And then you have just kind of a, the design they use right here. It's kind of like a little black stripe that goes upwards. And you can see, <coughs> excuse me, a little bit of the dots. And that's the same kind of uh, fading away, pixelized look where they use it on the finger compartment where it starts with blue and then it kind of fades to black. Uh, you have the Hay Hayabusa in blue that's embossed on the fingertip compartment as well. Um, you have the red triangles, one's hollow, one's solid. Uh, and I, I'm assuming that's just to keep 
the Velcro strap aligned to where it needs to be at. Uh, white Hayabusa embossed vertically on the Velcro strap that's uh, three and a half inches. Rotating to the palm side. It says net weight 16 ounces and you have like these two red chevrons. Again embossed into that Bilar material. Uh, that hollow triangle and then just kind of their features that they list. Um, you, you see companies do that like obviously Hayabusa in uh, Engage Industries does it with their gloves as well. It says T3D technology. Uh, fusion splinting is basically their version of a, a, a wrist support system as well as the back of the wrist uh, that kind of gives you that, that more of that stiff rigid feel on the back of your wrist uh, which I'm not particularly a fan of because it kind of gives you a little bit more of a forward bend to your wrist, which we'll discuss here in a second. But on the traditional T3s, it, the design of it has kind of that angled um, padding with the lines that go across. And you can kind of see it in here a little bit, but it's a little bit camouflaged by the design of the glove. So you have that fusion splinting, which is what they've been using ever since the beginning. And the same thing with their dual X closure, which is going to be the crisscross uh, Velcro closure system right here. So you can see... You know, when you open it up, you have one Velcro strap, and then you have the second one on the inside. It says Dual X. One nice thing is they have that rubberized tab. So when you have one glove on already and you're trying to put the other one on or remove it, you can easily grab that rubber tab with the glove. Um, so you have that. And you have that dual closure system. The inside strap is elastic. So you have that really nice elastic feel to where you can really stretch it out and give yourself that really nice tight wrist support. Some people are not a fan of this type of closure system because they feel it chokes the wrist out too much. And you can definitely go way too tight where you cut off the blood circulation. So I, I do like the dual X closure system. I think it would be more effective if it was higher up, not just below this joint on your wrist. Because where it sits right now, when you have it on, you can see that everything is just kind of across on this plane. So there's really nothing up here in terms of getting a locked in feel. And you see other companies do kind of their version of a of glove. Um, I'm gonna be doing a review here in a couple of weeks on Shadow Fight Goods, but they have their own uh, special lacing system with the Velcro. Um, and then obviously we know the Fortress Super Strap where they have one Velcro strap and the second one up here. So you get a little bit more locked in feel. So it'd be nice if, yes, Hayabusa has that dual closure system, but something that's integrated higher up to give you a little bit more locked in feel, especially in this area where people get a lot of injuries. So you do have that dual X closure system, the elastic right here that keeps the palm together, a, 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 an attached thumb, and you also have ventilated holes on the thumb as well as in the finger compartment, and I'd say a medium size uh, grip bar right there. Uh, quality wise, they're pretty much the same as the other Hayabusa gloves. So if you have your pair of synthetic T3s, um, a, a pair of synthetic H5s, they're along the lines of those. Um, they're, they're, I'm sure they're made by the same manufacturer in China. Uh, my, my biggest issue with these is going to be uh, the stitching. You can see some areas where, you know, around that little rubber patch, some of the stitching is fraying. Uh, the weight is good. Um, they both weighed in at 15.9 ounces. So, you know, big thumbs up to Hayabusa for getting the weight on point and not being overweight. Um, it uses the Vilar. I will say that the synthetic Vilar that Hayabusa uses in their gloves is probably some of the better synthetics in terms of durability. So if you're looking for something very durable, this is you know, definitely on the higher end of synthetics with this Vilar. In terms of like sweat, moisture, and heat resistance, they do very well. And I've seen a lot of people at the gym that have had these gloves for a while, not this particular glove, but the, like a, the, their original T3s they've had for a couple of years and they're still doing pretty well, other than some maybe a little bit of you know, fading and a little bit of cracking, but overall have held up nicely. You know, the stitching looks pretty good. On the palm side, again, some of the, some of the little bit of fraying right there. The outside edges look pretty clean. Um, you know, the design, I'm, I don't know how I feel about the look of the glove. I think it has too much going on. Um, I feel like they, they could have gone without this little window right here. I know what they're trying to do. They're trying to just show you like, hey, you know, what you're really getting is that 3D printed foam. So it's almost like they're trying to market that 3D printed cell. So I said foam, but that cell. So they're basically trying to make that the centerpiece of the glove to show off. But to me, it kind of loses the effectiveness of the glove and it just kind of feels like it's a little bit overdone. Um, and same thing with like, you have like these four little boss stripes with those arrows on the thumb. I feel like there's just a lot going on. And <clears throat> we'll talk about the price here in a second, but for the price increase that they put with these gloves, 
I just feel like these feel a little bit cheap in that regard. I feel like they could have done up a little bit more uh, for the price point that they're asking um, in terms of the, the design, making it a little bit more cleaner. Just again, a lot going on with these gloves. Um, the inside utilizes a kind of a, a smooth foamy tricot style liner. You have about an inch of foam on the back of the wrist. That's dense foam padding. Um, in the inside of the wrist, you also have that splint that comes up to right about here. And then on this side as well, all the way to the top. So you have a good amount of, of wrist support. And the glove itself, you know, does feel pretty well balanced in terms of the distribution of weight, not too top heavy and not too bottom heavy as well. So in that regard, but I think the biggest issue here is gonna be probably the stitching and just the overall look of the glove. I, I don't know, it just feels kind of cheap to me in my, in my opinion. Uh, comfort of the gloves, put the gloves on. They're very comfortable. You put the dual X closure on. It does feel nice and tight and supportive around this portion of your wrist. So when you're looking at it exposed and you're, you're not, you don't have your glove on, this dual X closure system sits right about here on your wrist. You know, it would be nice to have something a little bit higher up to where it really gives you the protection you're looking for right around here. So it prevents, you know, from your wrist from going one of these directions. So if you ever had a hand injury from boxing, like if you were doing bag work and you hit the bag at a, at a, a wrong angle or you punch too hard at the wrong angle, you'll know that a lot of times the injuries are gonna come from like that side to side uh, movement. Like say maybe you punch the bag and you kind of cock your, your wrist that way. That's often, and you're putting all your power into it. That's typically, at least for myself, that's where I've sustained injuries is where I'll punch the bag and it kind of, kind of tw twists just a little bit the wrong angle. So I feel like the gloves do a good job of keeping this portion of the wrist uh, aligned. Uh, I think there's just something that needs a little bit, be a little bit higher up. Uh, the other issue I had is just if you kind of have this forward kind of, you feel like you're doing this all the time with these gloves, like your hands are kind of rotating inwards. And I'm not a big fan of that. I know what they're doing in terms of keeping the back of the wrist nice and rigid and supported. But when you're landing your punches, it feels like you're almost like you're over rotating and your punches are landing kind of downwards instead of just being flush. Um, so I'm, I'm, I really don't like that sensation, that feel of my, my fist kind of just rolling like that. Um, and that comes on to the next thing. The thumb does feel really good, uh, nice and deep. You don't have any issues with the thumb collapsing or the tip being too shallow. Uh, nice deep finger compartment. I definitely like the, the finger compartment. Grip bar feels really good. Um, for a 16 ounce glove, I'd say it's pretty much on point, even with my hand wraps on, in terms of width of the hand compartment. So it's not too wide, not too narrow. So they did a good job. Uh, one thing I did notice they, they mentioned in the description of these gloves is that they're broken in. They definitely are not. Um, these gloves are very stiff. I mean, I can't open my hand past that. So in terms of like being able to open your palm to parry shots, you definitely can't do that. I mean, it's gonna take a very long time and I don't know how long that will be in terms of breaking in uh, 3D printed cells, which is basically like a rubberized type material. Um, one thing you'll notice too, is I feel like this 3D printed cell is all one piece. Uh, so the next question I think a lot of people have asked me is, is there other types of foams in here? And outside of the liner, I believe that that 3D printed cell, cause I'm poking the inside with my finger right now, and I can feel that, home, that honeycomb structure with my finger. So I believe that this 3D printed, without cutting the gloves open, with this 3D cell is all one piece. So it's not layered. You don't have like another layer of a softer foam or some type of rubber or EVA or polyurethane. I think everything is just one piece of, of that 3D printed material. So and I can feel that with my finger. You do have kind of a rolled piece of uh, foam on your finger compartment that gives you that nice secondary grip bar feel. So overall the comfort is definitely there. I think they're comfortable. I do like the liner. It doesn't bunch up. Um, I just wish the gloves were more broken in and not so stiff to where I can't even open my hands. Uh, now, the protection and performance of these gloves, that's gonna be the biggest feature and I guess expectations for these gloves. The 3D printed cell is probably, in terms of shock absorption, one of the best shock absorbing materials I've used thus far. Now, um, I've always praised those Tidal Gel World V2T gloves. I'm sure you guys have seen the videos if you, if you haven't, check them out if you get a chance. But, uh, that gel that Tidal, uh, that Tidal uses in the glove together with some of the other foams, 
I mean, you can really put a lot of leverage into your shots, even on a really densely filled heavy bag. You know, Nazo, uh, you know, Tidal, Ringside has some bags that are like rock solid. And if you were to hit it with a softer glove, man, you would, you would find a lot of discomfort and you'd probably want to stop using that bag and move on to the next one. I'm sure you guys have been to gyms where they have multiple bags and some people just stick to certain bags because the other two are, get neglected because nobody wants to hit them because they're so solid and they're just too hard. So this is the type of glove you can use on those bags where they're super rock solid and nobody wants to use them because they don't want to injure their hands. I feel like this 3D printed material does an excellent job of absorbing shock. I mean, I can really throw with a lot of power um, and really just feels like this material does a great job of just absorbing it and dispersing the shock. Uh, in terms of feedback, you, you don't really get the best feedback, I would say. I would say that this to me is like a better version of a molded foam glove. You get a little bit better feedback than molded foam, but you don't get that rounded bulbiness of a, a molded foam glove. Um, but you definitely get the, the, the great shock absorption and that more compressed feel rather than a bouncy feel. So I do like the fact that when you land, you get more of that compressed feel because of how that cell kind of crushes down on each other because each cell has like a little open pocket. So when you're basically landing on it, it kind of compresses down where foam is all one solid piece where these cells are kind of open in between. So it does compress nicely. So you get a nice sensation of landing your shot, but the shock absorption, I mean, if you have an injured knuckle or, or something is bruised on your knuckles and you're looking for a glove that you can really feel confident and still going to the gym and training and not worrying about re-injuring your knuckle, then this definitely would be up your wheelhouse in that regard uh, with the 3D print itself. So that to me is the best thing about the glove is the level of protection that you get with these. Cost-wise, on the flip side, these are extremely expensive for what they are. These gloves are $349, which is a big jump from their traditional T3 um, Avilar synthetic gloves, which I believe go for, and correct me, I think they're like $179 or $189, and then they have their genuine leather T3s, which I think are $249. So even, you know, if you're going apples to apples, synthetic, synthetic to synthetic, you're, you're looking at almost double in price uh, for these gloves and simply just for the fact that you're getting a different padding system and a couple of different aesthetic looks to it, which many people probably don't even care about. So, and some may, some may care about this. Some might love the des design and look of it and want to pay the extra money for that to each their own, right? But for you to double the price, I just don't think it's worth it. I mean, yes, I like the padding in terms of protection, but the, the padding is very stiff. Um, I also think that, you know, 3D printed material in terms of production, you'll start seeing more companies use it and the cost of it will go down. So I just think at $349, that's a lot to ask um, for a synthetic leather glove. Obviously it's made in China and that's really not a knock because there's some great Chinese made gloves out there. TFM, I did a review on their gloves and those are amazing gloves uh, for what they are. But for 350 bucks, um, you know, most people are just going to go say, go use that money and buy themselves a pair of winnings over a pair of these. Um, outside of the design, the aesthetic of the gloves, you, you know, you can't really use these for sparring. Um, if you brought these to a gym, you know, that, and, and you wanted to use these for sparring, I can definitely foresee the, the coach there for both yourself or even for the person that you're sparring against might bring up the fact that there's something on the back of the gloves and say, you know, you can't use that against my, my boxer because I don't want him to get injured from that opening. So, you know, that's kind of like you're shooting yourselves in the foot because technically you should be able to use this glove for sparring, especially at the price point you're paying. Um, but again, I just think that they're, you know, overpriced for what they are. Um, if you still want to get the, the T3s, I would still stick with the original T3s. And if you have some kind of like knuckle injury or, or issue, just supplement it with a, uh, a gel knuckle guard or something out there that will keep your knuckles protected. Um, but currently as it sits, I do think that there is a future for 3D printing when it comes to padding, uh, but I would wait, in my opinion, for it to kind of evolve and became a, become a little bit more mainstream in terms of other companies using it. Um, and that way you can really cut down on the cost and, and more people can enjoy the benefits of the shock absorption without paying the high price of it. Um, just my opinion on that. So if you guys have any questions or comments, make sure you guys leave them down below in the comments box. I'll put the link 
in the description box where you can find these Hayabusa T3D boxing gloves. And I'll see you guys later. Take care.